Hello everyone and welcome to Bevan's Builds. I'm Daryl and with summer in full swing I thought this would be the perfect time to start making videos about ponds. Specifically this video is going to be how to figure out the size of a pond pump and filter for your pond at home. So if this is something that interests you stick around because it's coming up. Now I actually should have took a lot of more videos and pictures of things I did before I got the pond to where it is currently looking anyway because this was horrible. Uh, this pond was actually installed several years ago. My pump went out a year and a half ago and it just, it, it absolutely looked terrible um, with the amount of algae and everything that was in it. But I was able to get most of the algae out. We got the new pond pump installed and filter system and uh, now it is already looking amazing. This is after only one week of me having this system installed. But let's get to the point of this video. And with that, I wanna get to the point of how you come about figuring out what size pond pump you need for your pond to keep it clean. The most important thing we need to know about trying to figure out what size pump to get in your pond is how many gallons is your pond in size. Now for me specifically, it's a fairly easy calculation because my pond is a perfect rectangle. To figure out the gallons in your pond, what you need to know is your width times length times depth times 7.48. Before I go too much further into the calculations of all this though, I do want to show you if you have a weird shaped pond. How to calculate that, how to come up with an average number, um, so that way you're getting a better and more accurate number for what you're going to be doing your calculations with. For example, this one here, I did a kidney pond, so we did three measurements, three foot, two foot, and three foot across. What you do is you add that number together, you come up with eight, and because you used three measurements, you divide by three, and we come up with 2.6. So that would be the width on this situation. This particular example was just one big, and I know that probably looks horrible, but <laughs> just hit me what that resembles. But anyway, um, that pond, the shape of that pond, we did two measurements. We did four foot and two foot. So together we get six foot, and then we divide by two, and then we get three inches or three feet. So that's the number we would use in that example. Now for depths, if you have a tiered pond where it steps three different ways, I would do three different measurements. In this situation, we come up with six, three plus two plus one. Then we take the six, because we used three measurements, we divide by three, and we get two is going to be our depth number for that example. On this example, it's like a big T. So again, we did three measurements. We did one foot, two foot, one foot. Add those together, we get four. And because it's three measurements, we divide by three, we get 1.3. And one final example, this particular depth would be two different depths. So we did two measurements, two foot, one foot. Add those together, we get three, divide by two, and we get 1.5. I felt it was important to give people an idea of how to come up with an average number when you don't have the perfectly square rectangle or whatever pond like I have. Because for me, it's a pretty straightforward measurement. It's exactly eight feet wide by 14 feet long. So it's real easy to figure out when it's a number like that. But when you have weird shapes like I just showed you on the map there, what you do, like I said, you just take a couple different measurements depending on the oddness of the shape or whatever. And then by the number of, you take, add all those together and then you divide by how many measurements you got. And that will give you the number that you will plug into the formula I'm gonna show you now. Okay, now using the formula that I showed you just a few minutes ago, we're going to go ahead and calculate the gallons of a pond, specifically my pond. My pond is eight feet wide by 14 feet in length. And then like I showed you, you have to do averages and that is my depth number. So my depth is 1.2 is what I plugged in there. So we got eight times 14 times 1.2 times the 7.48. And that tells me that my pond is 1,005 gallons. Okay. Now we know the gallons of our pond. Why is that an important number? Well, here's the reason why. When you're trying to pick out a pump filter system for your pond, what you physically want to do is you want the water in the pond to be recirculated once every two hours. So when you're looking at pumps to purchase for the filtering system, 
you want them to be capable of pumping at least half the amount of gallons of your pond. So in my particular situation, I am looking for a 500 gallon per hour pump. Now, here's where I'm gonna show you I made a mistake. This is the pump that I bought for my pond. And I'm gonna show you a few different things about it. I'm gonna take you back out to the pond and show you what I'm talking about. But I have to say, I still absolutely love this pond pump and filter. And it also has a light. This is a five in one pond pump system. But here's the trick. When I bought it, I saw the 600 large <laughs> pond and I automatically thought because when I saw the number, I assumed, and we all know what happens when we assume, we make an ass out of you and me. Anyway, I assumed, like I just said, uh, that this was a 600 gallon per hour pump, and it is not. You gotta go look down at the small print, and it tells you it's a 369 gallon per hour pump. But let me tell you, I have been extremely impressed with this particular pump, because not only am I running a fountain, and I also have a light going, but I even have a small waterfall. And let me show you what I mean. Both of these water features that you see running in front of me right now, the little fountain with the boy and the girl spewing out the water, and this big fountain that's spraying are all running off that one pump. And I'm trying to show you what it is, is there is a little T-splitter at the base of this that allows you to add other attachments. And I simply just put some clear hose. I'm hoping you can see it by following my finger. And I ran it up and into the boy, little, little boy and the little girl. And that is what's allowing me to actually run both of these features. So even though this pump is actually underrated for my pond, I have to say, it is doing an awesome job. Now the reality is, like I said, that is actually undersized for my particular pond. But I'm going to go ahead and run with it for now just to see how it goes. Because to me, it's running all my water features. It has a light that's attached to it. As you can see while I'm talking here, I'm going to show you a quick picture of my pond at night. And it has actually cleaned my water up considerably. So I would still highly recommend it, but I would only recommend that particular style pump for the 600 gallon anyway, for a 600 and 650 so on uh, size pond anyway, or smaller. They do have a variety of different sizes available for sale though, and I'll be putting a link in the description below of this video if you want to be able to get that pump as well. That is a Bennington Aqua Garden 5-in-1 Pond Kit. Here's the reason they call it a 5-in-1. It's a pump, it's a filter, it has a light, it has a spout, and then it also has what I call the wastegate. But that wastegate is actually, in my particular situation, what's supplying the boy and the girl fountain. And then this is the main fountain in the middle. But again, this is an awesome, awesome pump. It's just, like I said, technically it's undersized. So what I'm gonna be doing is monitoring my pump to make sure, cause so far it has been cleaning the water up very well, but I'm gonna keep a very close eye on it. And if I start noticing the water quality going down, I will be buying another pump because for me, I actually bought too small of a pump, but it's still, again, I highly, highly recommend it. Now, just to sum up once again, you want to make sure you calculate the actual gallons of your pond, which is by multiplying the width times the length times the depth times 7.48, and you want to recirculate the total gallons that are in your pond at least once every two hours. And I hope everybody is able to build a pond that they love at their home as well. Anyway, that's all for this video. So as always, thank you for coming to Bevan's Builds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share below, and hopefully we'll see you next time on Bevan's Builds.